Well, welcome to this week's uh, service here at Dunes Baptist Church. This is our third week with the video uh, service, and uh, hopefully it's been a blessing to you. If you would turn in your Bibles uh, to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, we're going to read the first six verses. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor, for fornication and all uncleanness, or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh the saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. And let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask once again that you bless the service. Lord, please bless the, the video this week. Lord, please be with me. help me as I preach. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, we, 
as earthly fathers, uh, we want our kids to listen to us, you know, and, and obey. And uh, but you know what? Sometimes we, uh, we're, the way we lead them, or uh, maybe some advice that we give them, um, maybe ends up uh, being wrong, or maybe not the best advice we could have given them. We did, our, you know, uh, it was our desire to, to give them uh, the best advice, but at, down the road we realized well, maybe we might have uh, not been uh, quite, uh, it might not have been the best advice we could have given them. But the thing is, when it comes to our Heavenly Father, we need to remember that He always knows what's best. He has his, our best interest at heart. And He knows what's best for us. Like I said, we might not always know what's best. Somebody uh, asks us a, a question and we try to uh, be a help that we, you know, be a help to them. I mean, our, our children or what have you. But, uh, but you know what? Our, when it comes to our Heavenly Father, he knows what's best for us. And we're going to look at, uh, take, take just a few minutes and look at a few things uh, regarding children of God and, and following their Heavenly Father. And we as children, we, have, we, need to, uh, we need to follow our Heavenly Father. We see children of God, they imitate their Heavenly Father. They imitate their Heavenly Father. Um, uh, we, you see the follower, you know, think of uh, the definition of a follower, an imitator. And uh, we, we all know, uh, you know, when, uh, when our children were born, you know, maybe sometimes, those, you know, people will say, oh, he, you know, oh, she, she reminds me, she looks like her mom. Or, you know, she, he, that fellow, uh, that boy, he acts like his dad. And a lot of times that's true. I've told this story before, how that uh, I was in a store, and, uh, and a fellow walked by, and he had a mohawk. And, you know, you don't see those too often. Uh, this, was, this was several years ago. And, and uh, he, he walked by, and, and, and he caught my eye because he had that mohawk. And, uh, and uh, here, walking right there beside him, uh, was a little boy, probably four years old, but he wasn't that old at all. And, and uh, sure enough. He had a mohawk just like his dad. And he was like, well, you know, uh, that, you know he, he's his father's son. And, it, and, and with those two, uh, in that case, it was hard to deny because I think they both had blonde hair. And uh, they, they looked like it. They even had the same haircut. And, uh, but the thing is, uh, you know, sometimes uh, we as earthly parents, uh, you know, we might say, you know, well, well, do as I say and not as I do. But the thing is, we need to realize the fact that we have a Heavenly Father, and He was our example. Our Heavenly Father never says, uh, you know what, uh, you know, do as I say, don't, don't do as I do. I might have messed up, you know, in this area or that area, but, but uh, you know what, uh, just do what I say in this area. No, we, we can follow His example. We, we need to, uh, he was, we as Christians, we're supposed to be Christ-like. And we need to follow His example. And, and as we know, he, he was our example that we, we are to follow. And I think the question uh, is, what do, do we as Christians, who do we imitate? Who do we imitate? You know, our, when people see us, do they say, uh, you know what, uh, he, he look, he, you know, he, he reminds me of Christ. Do we remind others of our Heavenly Father? Or, is it, or, or do we live lives that are, that are so opposite of what the Bible teaches, what God would have us to do, that uh, it's like uh, they didn't, there, there isn't any resemblance at all? Do those around us think that we're, they're Christ-like? Do they see Jesus in us? In, this, in the, the situation with this uh, the COVID-19, you know, last week we talked about, uh, the, one of the parts was about having peace or panic. And as we walk with Christ and we, uh, we, we read His Word and we pray uh, through, the, through these times of this pandemic, are we, do, we, uh, do people see panic in our lives or do they see peace in our lives? And as you know, it's not just during this, it's, it's all through our lives. You know, the, the trials 
come. The testings will come. Uh, surely we're going to get through this uh, pandemic. And uh, you know what? Once we get through it, something else is going to arise. Whether it's with our family or whether it's with the community or whatever it may be. But the thing, uh, the thing is that the fact still remains that, uh, you know, as we go through it, are we going to have that panic or are we going to have peace in our lives? And not only that, number two, children of God follow closely to their Heavenly Father. They follow closely to their Heavenly Father. Uh, you think of uh, uh, when your children were little and uh, you maybe you start walking through a crowd. And what do they do? They, uh, they, they uh, you know, uh, or maybe going to cross the street. What do you say? Ah, here, take my hand. You know, hold on to me. And many times the, the child wants to, uh, is looking for their parent's hand to hold on to. But the thing is, do we have a desire to walk closely, follow closely to our Heavenly Father uh, as we're in the world? Little, little kids, when, you, when they go through a crowd, uh, they look for their parents. You know, they want to stay close to them. As we, as we go through life and we're uh, traveling and, uh, and we're in the world, do we, do we have a desire to stay close to our Heavenly Father? You say, well, why, you know, why would I want to stay close to, uh, to my Heavenly Father for a couple of reasons? One, for uh, the safety and security. You know, when, it, when it, down here on earth, every, every child should feel safe around their parents, around their father. And, it, and, and it, it's, it's a shame uh, that there are, there are children that, that are scared by their parents, by their fathers. And shame on those, those I almost said men. But, but the thing is, they, uh, they, need, <laughs> they should feel secure. But the thing is, every child of God can feel safe around their Heavenly Father. You know, when, we, when, we, when the, the storms of life come, uh, when we're uh, facing the problems and the trials and the testings, whatever they may be, we can go to our Heavenly Father and we can feel safe, we can feel secure in His presence. But not only for safety and security, but for to see where it is leading. You know, many times children want to, you know, where are we going? Where are we going? Yeah, uh, the, the old proverbial, uh, are we there yet? You know, <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, we, you're on a seven hour trip and ten minutes into it, they're always wanting to know, uh, are we there yet? And uh, the fact that, uh, you know, they want to know where they're going. And you think about, uh, I think maybe when you were a child or when, you're, when, you're, uh, when your children were little, uh, and we've all had that, that moment uh, where maybe in a crowd or, or someplace uh, in a store and, and uh, uh, as a child you turn around and you realize that your parents have walked away and you, you, you don't know where they went for a minute. And, and what a panicking feeling that is. Uh, it could probably uh, scarred you enough that you probably, were, no matter how old you are, you probably remember it uh, at least to a degree. And uh, we need to follow close enough so we can feel His leading in our lives. We can feel that, that, that <laughs> uh, we can feel that Holy Spirit leading. You know, if we're not careful, we'll, uh, we'll drift away from Him and we'll become so callous and hard-hearted that, that, that Holy, then when the Holy Spirit tries to speak to us, uh, we don't even hear it. But we need to follow closely to our Heavenly Father. Number three, children of God hold on to their Heavenly Father in times of trouble. They hold on to their Heavenly Father in times of trouble. Uh, I think of uh, when my daughter was little, and uh, when the storm, when there was a storm, she uh, she always wanted uh, to be around Dad. And, and you know, there there are probably uh, if you're a parent, you probably uh, you have your some. One or all your children, maybe uh, when there was a, a storm come up, uh, maybe you know, maybe a uh, big thunderstorm, lightning storm, whatever it may be. You know, they wanted to know where Dad was. They, they felt protected when their father was there. But you know what? When the storms of life come, 
Uh, we need to hold on to our, our Heavenly Father. Whether it be sickness, whether it be uh, financial problems, whether it be uh, family situations, whether it be uh, like the pandemic that we're all dealing with and being, feeling the effects of uh, to one degree or another. We can hold on to our Heavenly Father in those times of trouble. We can go to Him. Uh, we need to, uh, as, we, as we've been talking about and mentioning the last few weeks, the idea of, uh, of spending time in His Word. The idea of, of spending time praying and talking to Him. Many have extra time now. Are we, are we using that time wisely? Are we using it uh, to spend time in His Word? Spend time praying and going and getting that, that peace that comes from Him? Or we're just spending it uh, worrying and being anxious about what, you know, what, what's the day going to bring? I think we're all familiar with that, the, that poem, uh, Footprints. You know, it's been around for man, many, many years. We all know the idea that there was two sets of footprints on the, on the sand and it, when it, it, when it got down to the, the hard parts of life, you know, the trials and, and, and problems of life, there were only one set of footprints in the, and the, and the, the person thought, you know, why, God, why did you leave me in those hard times? And as you know, uh, as, as the poem goes, uh, those were the times when God carried them. You know, we have a heavenly father that's there for us. We need to hold on to our Heavenly Father in times of trouble. Number four, children of God allow their Heavenly Father to lead them. They let their Heavenly Father lead them. You know, we, it, it, uh, maybe once again, is when, when you were a child or when you're when you had kids and, and they were little. Uh, you know, we 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 wanted them to obey. And if we're the, the obedient Christian that we ought to be, we'll have a desire to have our, heavenly, have our Heavenly Father lead us, follow His will, follow where He's leading us. But you know, there, there are plenty of God's children today uh, that are rebellious. They don't care, you know, uh, you know they, they see what God's Word says, and uh, you know, they think that doesn't apply to them today. Or they think, you know, you know that's just... Uh, you know, that's not important. That's just a small thing. Whatever it is, they'll justify it in many different ways. But we need to not be rebellious. We need to be obedient to our Heavenly Father and allow Him to lead us and have a desire to have that, that Holy Spirit leading us and uh, uh, seek His will and follow it. But then not only that, number five, children of God find their Heavenly Father as quickly as possible when they realize they've become separated. You know, we need to get things right. When, when that sin comes between us and God. That doesn't mean that we're not still saved. Just like uh, in, the, in, the, in the store, the supermarket, wherever you're at, and uh, your little child walks, you know, gets away from you for a minute. That doesn't mean they're not still your child. You might be separated for a minute or two. And hopefully that's all the longer it is. But the thing is, you're still... You're, uh, it's just that relationship has been broken. And we need to... We, when, we, uh, when sin uh, comes into our lives, we need to, to recognize it and get it right. And restore that, that relationship. We need to get back to get that relationship fixed as quickly as possible. Not let it keep, not keep drifting apart farther and farther. You know, when it, when it feels like uh, we're not as close to God as we once were. You know, we need to remember that it wasn't, it wasn't God that's moved. We're the ones that have moved. And we need to get that, get it right and get back with Him. And the thing is, the question is, uh, are we living like a child of God? Are we living Christ like, do, do people see Christ in us? Are we following Him like we should? Are we following Him and, uh, and, and feel that safety that He provides? 
God, are we letting Him lead our lives? Are we, are we staying close to Him through the storms? He's there for us. And then secondly, are, we, are you a child of God? Are you one of His children? I mean, I've said it many times. Uh, you, you'll, you'll hear it every once in a while. Uh, maybe at work or wherever. They, you know, people say, well, you know, we're all God's children. And I know that they, they say that to be uh, comforting. I don't know, you know, whatever reason they say it. But the, the fact remains is that's not true. Only those of us that have, that have trusted Him as Savior are, are His children. But although the fact is that we're not all God's children, we, we all have access to the salvation, the, the same plan of salvation. That same free gift. If we just realize that, uh, that we're a sinner. Realize that the price of that sin is death and hell. Realize that Jesus paid that price when he, when he came and He lived a perfect life and died on the cross and was buried and rose again the third day. And realize the fact that, that he made that price and accept that free gift of salvation. Call on him. You too can be one of his children. And then you'll have be able to, uh, to you'll have that, that, that you'll be able to walk close to him. Have that relationship with him that I spoke about. And the fact is, uh, you know, we will we'll say, and we'll give lip service to the fact that, you know, our Heavenly Father knows best, but do we follow what He says? And the importance of, of walking with Him and, and, and being Christ-like and following Him with it, and serving Him with our lives. And let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask that You be with the message. Lord, please take it. Please use it. Lord, challenge our hearts. Lord, please comfort our hearts during these time, the time, troubled times, the uncertain times that we're dealing with. Lord, thank you for the fact that you're there with us. You're there for us. Lord, please help us to turn to you. Lord, with the problems that we're facing, Lord, and help us to take it to you. Lord, if there's one here, that, if there's one watching that doesn't know you as Savior, Lord, please speak to their hearts. Lord, have them call me. Call the church or, or talk to someone in their area. That they might trust you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget, uh, those of you uh, from News Baptist Church, if, you, if there's anything I can do for you, please feel free to give me a call. Uh, I know all of you have my cell phone number. You did call me, text me. Uh, I talked to several of you to, uh, this past week. And I... Uh, and so just to, just to chit chat, just to kind of check up on each other. And that was a blessing to hear that, uh, you know, it sounds like everyone I've talked to, uh, it sounds like they're ready to, to be back to normal, as we all are. Uh, but they're doing well, and that's, that was a blessing. And, uh, and also, as far as the, the giving, I mentioned that last week. And uh, what a blessing. Uh, so many of you are uh, faithful to, to make sure your, your, your offerings get to church, tithes and offerings get here. And, uh, whether uh, through the mail or have something to drop them off, and, and uh, or uh, like I mean, I even said last week how they uh, some have cash and they don't want to send it, so I uh, sent somebody to pick it up, and uh, and what a blessing, what a help that is to to keep the church going, to keep the bills paid uh, even during this time, and uh, don't forget I'm praying for you folks, and uh, I always uh, I do daily, I always I, I did before, but but uh, even more now, so or that's the correct way to say it. But uh, even uh, even more now, and I trust that you you're praying for my, for me and, and the rest of the church family. And, uh, and those of you that have never been to Dunes Baptist Church, uh, it's it's my desire uh, that these videos have been a blessing to you and an encouragement. And uh, I hope uh, some one of these days we'll get a chance to meet. Whether uh, <laughs> you're in the area, uh, you know wherever you're at, if you're in Northwest Indiana, uh, we'd love to meet you. And uh, so, until next week, we'll see talk to you later. Thank you.